Okay, so most of the time I'm not going to be pinned today. I am going to um, kind of go to the, the group and let you all be seen and share and ask questions. But for starters, I just want to say thank you everyone for being here at day four of the four day Ascension challenge, four days to raise your frequency. Um, how many of you in the chat, if you will just put how many days of the four days you attended, whether this is your first one or you came to all four, just let me know one through four, how many days did you come? Lots of fours. Great. Love it. It's been amazing. First one, three or four, lots of lots of fours, some threes and some ones and twos. That's great, guys. So many of you came to all of them. And so for those of you that um, for those of you that made it to all of them, can, give me an idea of, I'm wondering how you're feeling. Do you feel like you've raised your frequency over the last three days? I know today's day four, but um, just, just give me a yes or a thumbs up if you feel like you have felt a difference, felt a change, felt something shift in you to raise your frequency. Yes, absolutely. Lots of yeses. Awesome. Ascending indeed. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. 12th dimensional upgrade. I love it. This is fun. Skills on how to raise your frequency. Yes. Maybe, but my unconditioned body is aching. <laughs> yeah. Um, on that note, I did have, um, I did have someone message me yesterday. She's a client and she said she was going through a detox effect after the Elkiwan meditation yesterday. And um, if anyone has felt a detox effect from any of these sessions, I'd just love to know in the chat, just say yes or me if you have, if you wanna say you haven't, that's fine too. Just to kind of get an idea. A detox effect can be anything from um, like feeling out of balance, you might feel um, like just kind of like you're coming back into order after being out of balance. You might have feeling like flu-like symptoms can happen, things like that. So I'm just gonna check and see. Okay, yeah, yep. Wow, you guys, it's, it's amazing what can happen when you do a lot of energy work. So I could have prefaced this whole uh, ascension challenge with you might experience ascension symptoms. We've all probably heard of ascension symptoms, symptoms of raising your frequency and particularly of embodying a higher frequency. There will be some clearing that has to happen. And that clearing is not only spiritual, it's not only mental and emotional, it's also physical. And so I would take that as a powerful sign that you have all done some major work if you're experiencing that. Now, if you're not experiencing that, that's fine. I don't expect you to feel bad. But if you are experiencing some symptoms of detox, that is perfectly okay. It's normal when you do intense um, embodiment work that you are bringing more light into your body. Therefore, that light is pushing out density from all parts of your multidimensional self, including the physical. And when we embody light, then our bodies become more light and there is an upgrade that happens. And that oftentimes results in feeling the upgrade by detoxing what is no longer serving the highest uh, good for the body. And so it might be uncomfortable. Usually it does not last long. And what you want to do to, um, to help, to help with that integration and help with that detox and help balance those energies is drink good water, 
good clean water, filtered water, and lots of it. Drink extra water, just like you would if you did a sweat lodge or had a 90 minute massage or went into a hot sauna. You're, you're sweating out toxins or you're massaging out toxins. So you want to put in good clean water to, to help everything flow, to help release and clear those old energies from your body. And then um, additionally, what can be really helpful is to eat a really pure, clean diet for the next several days. I mean, it's good to do that anyway, right? But if you're normally, you know, just to upgrade your diet, eat some more um, fruits and vegetables, organic salads, things like that, lettuce salads, things that will upgrade your frequency. Green juice is great. Um, if you get like the spirulina or green algae, um, or blue green algae is wonderful to supplement in the process. That's going to bring up your nutrition and help your body integrate new, new frequencies and new energies. Um, also, big one is going out in nature. You hear me talk about this all the time. Get out in nature. I know even if it's cold, even if it's um, even if you have to wear a lot of clothing where you are, still go out, get some sun on your skin, get some um, get some like if you can take your shoes off, that's so much better. Walk barefoot, get sun on your skin and just let yourself absorb the energies of nature. Do some grounding, walking barefoot, grounding um, outside and get in the grass or the water, a tree, you know, wherever you can go to absorb nature, that's going to be really helpful for an integrating the energies. So um, those things will all help. Your diet is going to make a difference. Lots and lots of water. If you want to go from this challenge into a juice cleanse, or um, or a fast or water fasting, even better. That's going to help it happen even more quickly. You're going to detox and upgrade, detox and upgrade. And that's just kind of the way this system works until we're so clear and pure that we don't need to do that anymore. So, if, you know, there's no judgment in it. Whatever you're experiencing, it's perfect for you and your body. Communicate with your body, check in to see what you need and let yourself, um, give yourself the nurturing and self-care that you need to move yourself into balance and harmony and integrate these higher frequencies. And um, so today, day four is ask me anything. And that really, I really do mean you can ask me anything today. I'm going to be an open book uh, as just so, so those of you who aren't as familiar with my work know, I am a galactic shaman. I am a trainer of embodied ascension. I have been on an ascension path myself since I was really about 19 years old. And um, I've been at it a long time. And I've had a lot of experiences. I've traveled with a walk-in shaman. I have been trained um, by galactics. I've been trained uh, in multiple different styles of shamanism and ascension and, and energy work. So you're, you're free to ask me anything about any of those experiences or anything that you're experiencing that you want to kind of unpack, get some mentorship around. Um, also, anything about what we've done the last three days. If you have questions about the diamond heart activation that we did on day one, uh, I know a lot of people messaged me privately. A lot of people um, wrote me emails. I'm way behind on emails. I'm about, yeah, I'm, I don't know, somewhere between 50 and 100 emails behind right now. So I do read them, but please give me time. Um, and, you know, I, I did see some come in about your experiences and things, though, and I did reply to a few of those that I saw pop up at the top. But just um, this is your chance. You know, this is your chance. You've got me here. Ask your questions. And I see people putting their hands up already. That's great. That's the best way to do it. Put your hand up and I will call on you in order. And um, and then also you know, anything about the breath work, the breath work was really powerful. I know I saw a lot of people posting about that. Some people wrote me about it. People even posted on Facebook about it. So I know you were having experiences around the breath work. You can ask about that. You can also ask about the Elki one that we did yesterday, the Elki one meditation. And I'm hearing a little bit of feedback since somebody might be unmuted. Okay. 
And so, yeah, what anything goes, and it can also be, I'll, I'll preface this with, it can be personal, but please know that you are being recorded and this will be shared to a bigger audience. So keep that in mind. If you're asking something personal that um, it's maybe sensitive, you might wanna be careful about how you present that unless you want the whole world to know and you don't care, that's fine. Um, also, if you can make your questions relevant to a more global audience, that's always helpful. I do believe that anybody, anybody that speaks up, there's something in each person's journey for everybody else. But if you can kind of uh, gear your question toward the collective versus the self, then that will be helpful to even more people. Okay, so from there, I am going to go back to gallery so I can see you all and I will start I'll just go in order, um, at least in order that they are on my uh, on my screen. So first, I see Jennifer. Go ahead and unmute. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Thank you. I'm just. I've never heard the term galactic shaman, so I wanted to hear a little bit more about what that was and how that came to you, which is kind of my part two of the question. Sure, it's one of my favorite topics. <laughs> um, so a galactic shaman is, you know, we're still working just like an earth shaman, which is sort of a differentiation, but essentially there's a lot of similarities working with the forces of nature, working with the earth, working with the plant kingdom, working with the animals, the seen and unseen energies of the earth. That's kind of our traditional shamanism. Um, I also work with the galactics, and that's not unique to me. There are many galactic shamans, and my history is from a very young age, I was visited by um, extra dimensional beings, I, really from my earliest memories, I was having visitations. I was told uh, things, and I was also told not to tell the adults because the, the adults wouldn't understand. And so that kind of set me up for uh, uh, feeling different in my life and feeling like um, I, I was sort of, I guess, uniquely groomed to view myself as different from other people. That is so much why now I'm all about community, bringing community together, letting people know you're not the only one, you're not alone if you're having these experiences. But the galactics have been coming to me for, you know, since my earliest memories. And uh, when I was in my 20s, I had a walk-in experience, a galactic shaman who also embodied the energy of my twin flame came in, found me, and we did a what I thought was going to be a three-month journey. Uh, we ended up spending three years together, and I got deeply trained during that time. I you know, we we were interacting with really powerful energies with like starships, light ships would show up <laughs> and like literally show up at our house. Um, all different kinds of uh, beings were, were training and working with us. So it was a very powerful time. And uh, that was that was really the most profound part of my training that set me up to do what I do now. I also learned to channel, I learned to read energy psychically. I was already interested in all of those things and practicing to some degree before that happened. But during that three year period, I really got deeply trained at a level that I've never seen um, anyone else have any kind of training like that that's, that's here on earth because it was very galactic. So yeah, there's, there's a lot more to tell. I did write some of this in my book, which you can get on Amazon, The Love You Crave, A Course in Ascension, Alchemy and Connection to the Divine. And um, that, so that, that's in a nutshell, that's how it happened. Does that answer the question? It does. And, and so you kind of touched on the part too, it's like I'm, the reason I joined this and um, was because I'm interested in so much more in those connections, because this is way beyond where I am. But I'm very interested, but it sounds like that it's not something you kind of chase after that it finds you. Well, I mean, for me, certainly I, you know, as a small child, I had no idea what was going on. And then guidance 
sent me, I had a mission. I came here with a mission. My mission is to assist humanity in ascending in their ascension process. So that became very clear to me during that three year period that I was training and everything that I've done since is along those lines. If spirit tells me, and I was happy behind the scenes. I know a lot of you have heard me say that I, I only came out in front of the camera about four years ago um, and really started doing this work at a higher level uh, in higher visibility. But um, but that was on guidance as well. I didn't just one day say, hmm, I think I want to be, you know, in front of people now. It was more of this like shove from guidance. Okay, go, go do it. So um, what I do though, I mean, I that was my experience. I don't know how common that is. I think everybody's guided in their own way. I created a six month training program, which condenses the 30 years of my experiences that I've had um which you know some of what i've just talked about into a step-by-step -step program where you are you're learning um independently online and you're also getting together with me and the group twice a month so that i can guide you through that process and that to me is is a great service because you don't have to go through 30 years of of what you know all the trainings that i did i've taken the the absolute best of the best and made it uh, 11 modules and you can go through one by one and learn them um, at your own rate and your own speed you have six months to do it and then you also get a group to do it with the groups become soul family it's just incredible what happens i mean people olivia you're shaking your head because you know you were you were in one of my earlier groups too a few years ago and um those groups just get so connected your soul family it's not an accident who comes in and i can tell you the people that are coming into this next group are powerful people and it's it's i'm excited to see what's going to happen on this next round it's going to be everybody expands each other it's a container where everybody's experience comes in it doesn't matter where you are when you come in by the time you leave you are at a higher level and you've connected with soul family and you are in your ascension process and you have the tools so that when you leave that container you know what to do you know how to handle the things that come up so you don't have to have experienced it the way that i did in order to get the training because i've created that for you Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, Mike C. Hi, Mike. Hi, Wachella. Hi, everybody. Yeah, that, that nice to be on, and this has been a great experience. Um, one of the questions that I have for you, Wachella, is is all the the solar energies that are coming. I, I believe we're getting bombarded by all these solar energies, and we're kind of moving through the photonic belt, and we're right in the middle of it. And, and I do sense the, so there's some truth to this solar flash coming that will be quite obvious to everybody. And um, it will like, it'll, it'll change everything. Uh, what's your uh, view on that and, and, and kind of why? Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, well, the why is easy. The why is because now's the time. The time is now for ascension. <laughs> and um, and it always has been. You know, it's always been, it's going to be. I feel like when I look back on my life and I see what's happening now, it was always going to be this way. You know, it was, we, we came here for this. We all came here for this. And so, you know, if you're feeling like, yeah, you know, I, I, it's, it's crazy what's going on, but it feels right. It feels like, yeah, this is exactly what's supposed to be happening because it is because you knew that before you came here, because you came here for that for this, for this time right now, it's exciting. And um, I know there's a lot of intensity. Yes, there's a lot of solar energy, you know, um, the I, I'm sure that you've probably heard me talk about sun gazing. Uh, many yes. of you have been in my container and you've heard me mention sun gazing. So this is a perfect time to go back into that um, sun gazing. You are you're looking at our solar solar system sun, which is receiving and light codes and codements of from the central sun, which is really it's beaming through to us to allow us when we go out, you know, look at how the sun has been sort of demonized too. like put sunscreen on, wear sunglasses, wear a hat, don't let yourself get sunburned, all these things. If you go into the sun morning and evening, if you go at sunrise and sunset, you will not get sunburned. 
Um, and, and I don't mean just at those times. You, if you have a regular practice of that, your, sun, your skin no longer gets burnt if you go out in midday sun either. I can go to the beach um, in the middle of the day in hot Florida for two hours and lay in the sun. And if I get, I might get a little red, but I do not get burnt anymore since I started sun gazing. It is because you're, you're absorbing those frequencies that help you uh, handle the solar energy. And, you know, it's, it's not an accident. There's, you know, the, if, and, you know, I do believe that there are dark forces that don't want this to happen. That's just the divine play that's, that we're acting out and we're going through right now. They want us to wear sunglasses. They want us to cover our skin and not, you know, not get those codes because those will ascend us. So we all have access to the sun and, um, I'm not telling anyone to go out and start staring at the midday sun. If you're, if you want, and I am, I am really being guided to do a sun gazing course available to the public. So you can look for that within the next year. I will be teaching properly how to do it. But in a nutshell, the easiest way to kind of begin is you go out in the sun at sunrise, and it's very safe for 15 minutes from the time the sun comes up over the horizon to to look at it with open eyes for 15 minutes i mean not 15 minutes your first time but for those 15 minutes that window is a great time to start and also the 15 minutes before the sun sets and um during that time there's no radiation coming from it it's easy to look at because it's mild it's not you know so bright in the sky you can start getting that and even if you don't want to look at it you can absorb those those frequencies into your skin and so the idea is to to take off as much clothing as you possibly can uh, exact opposite of what your dermatologist is going to tell you and get that sunlight on your skin if you can go out in a bikini even in the winter time do it um I, I know i'm friends with a lot of biohackers you guys have probably uh heard from primal hacker on my channel before uh tomorrow and thaddeus and they they do this they live in minnesota every day of the year they go out for sunrise and they wear bikinis in the winter time in the snow in in um, minnesota and they oftentimes wear boots because it's so cold and mittens but they're out in their in their little like the most minimal clothing possible and they're the healthiest people i know so um, I know that it that it works and it helps us assimilate the solar intensifying that's happening now. And there's going to be more and more and more solar energy. So if you're having a hard time with it right now, you're going to have to do a few things to get yourself balanced and ready. And sun gazing to me, it's free. It's easy. Everyone has access to it unless you live in a, like a really cloudy area or something. But even then you can still get some sun at some certain parts, at certain times the day um just use that and then of course nature is always helpful but as far as the solar flash um my guidance is always that the time is now we cannot bank on a solar flash happening in two months or six months or a year i'm not saying i don't think it will it might but we can't wait for that this is not the time to wait around. This is the time to take your ascension into your own hands and do the things that you need to do to get your energy up to speed, to increase your ability to embody more light, to love your body temple and get it balanced and healthy and as well as you possibly can, to eat the best food and drink the best water and go out in nature and have a healthy lifestyle, get exercise, take care of your physicality, get sunlight on your skin, swim in natural water. All of these things are going to ascend our frequency and then get the information that you need from the teachers that speak to your heart. When you hear someone sharing, you're like, oh, that that resonates for me. I think I want to learn from that person, then go for it. You know, we, we don't have to do it all alone. And um, that's why people like me do what I do. And I do a lot for free. And you can go, you know, as deep with me as you want to, if you want to just take the free stuff, great. If you want to dive into, you know, I have a number of courses online, as well as the six month course, and personal mentorships. So I'm here for that. And um, 
and, and, you know, there are many, many teachers. I'm not the only one, of course. So I just recommend whoever it is that you find that helps you upgrade, that helps you open your heart, helps you embody more of your divine empowerment and light. That's the person to go deeper with and, um, and then do all the other things I mentioned. And you're going to be set up whether there's a solar flash or not. It's all happening right now. I mean, I have experienced um this i've experienced a lot of personal solar flashes where i end up inside central sun inside that source energy the central sun is the twin flame of all of us of the human collective itself so we all have that relationship if we cultivate it and that for me i love the sun i go into the sun i i know the sun's energy it is part of my soul so i feel very very connected I feel like it would never hurt me. You know, you have to take care of your fears of it too. If you hear solar flash and you freak out, that's not going to help you. You get, you get to have a relationship, a loving relationship. The sun is my beloved. The sun uh, rains beautiful light codes onto me and upgrades me and takes care of me and nurtures me. And these are the things that are going to help us mentally to step into that higher light version of ourselves. We're like plants absorbing the nutrients of the sun and it is food for our souls and our bodies i'll stop there yeah i resonate with that and i i i agree i my son the sun is my friend i know if you don't put those sunglasses on you're actually getting the the photons of light and they actually encode your brain differently they can prepare your skin so that it's ready to absorb it without getting burnt so like it's there's so many things that they've been lying to us about it <laughs> but that definitely the sun is my friend and i am looking forward to you know the increase in solar energy whether there'll be a big flash or um something that'll just be a more of an instant upgrade um and i think maybe on some timelines that'll happen but uh, like you said whatever's happening now just keep working on yourself and getting better so thanks with shayla exactly yeah yeah, thank you, Mike. Well, Sheila, can I jump in? I don't know if you wouldn't mind if we alternated between picking hands and also the chat. Okay, sure. So um, since you spoke about sun gazing, um, uh, Alarika, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, uh, is asking the question as to, um, well, she's having problems with her soul, waking up her soul, she says. Could you give her advice? Um, she's learned about some techniques like singing and soul mirroring, but that has to be done by an activator. Uh, how can she do it herself? So you mentioned sun gazing, would that help her? So say that again, she activating her soul? Is that yes, waking, waking up her soul. Okay, waking okay. up her soul. Yeah, yeah, so you know, we are all waking up all the time. If you're here, you know that you're, you're on a path of waking up and ascending. Uh, and certainly everything that I just said, everything that I just shared about Mike's question, the sun gazing, nature, water, everything else, that is all going to be helpful and uplifting during this time. Also, you know, studying with a teacher, uh, going deep with someone, having a guide, a coach, a mentor, and a group of people. I also have the membership that I'm opening for people that aren't really ready to jump into Embodied Ascension six-month course or want community. Any, I created a container for that. That is the membership. So jump into that. And that's open through October 31st. This is where we get to practice Ascension together. And it helps to have community. I did not have any community around my spirituality my entire youth until my 20s when the shaman, basically when the shaman came and got me. And, um, and then I learned about spiritual community and how powerful it is. Because when you get together with other people, with community, with like-minded people, you all expand each other. You're of course always doing your internal work, but getting together, you expand each other, you uplift each other, you, you, toss around ideas and you open each other in so many ways that wouldn't happen if you were just by yourself. And I, it's so important to have spiritual community. And if you're not in a place where you can have that community in person, I mean, I'm very fortunate to live in a place where there are lots of spiritual people and lots of spiritual community here. But if you don't have that in person, you can get that online now. And that's the beauty of it. So, um, 
certainly all of the things that I said before to Mike, as well as finding the community that is going to uplift you, all of those things will help you wake up. And then the obvious things like meditation, breath work, the breath, the ascension breath work that we did, that will wake up your soul. <laughs> um, and if, especially if you're practicing it daily or, or several times a week, uh, you know, communing with the sun, communing with the divine source within you, opening your heart, practicing uh, generosity and loving kindness and service to other, all of those things are going to wake you up and allowing yourself to feel what you're feeling. And that's a, another point I want to touch on is empaths are like this is this is our time we are designed for this time of higher frequency living and so as we feel and experience everything to honor that to appreciate that about ourselves don't let people tell you you're too emotional or too sensitive or too this or too that you know that's our superpower and as we come into these higher dimensional experiences of reality we need those feeling abilities these these it's like we're antenna and we pick up information we just weren't designed to pick up information from a lower density realm like the third dimension it's it's like an onslaught it's, it's overwhelming and that's why we put up boundaries but as we expand into 5d and higher into the golden realm into the realms of light the ascended realms we need that ability to be empathic and to feel each other and we support each other that way and our feeling abilities our empathic abilities are what connects us to the rest of humanity as well as our guidance as well as nature as well as the sun and that's how everything works i'm grateful to be an empath it is a superpower so i invite all of you to own it if you've been like ah why do i have to feel so much feel it give it a voice let yourself feel it that will upgrade you all right okay uh, okay uh let's go to mark you're you're muted so go ahead and unmute yourself Okay, thank you very much, program. It's uh, it's an enlightenment for me. Um, I'm going to ask you sort of a technical question because you did bring up starships that you've had uh, some contact with, and it's sort of scheduled for us here on Earth that we may be developing a starship within ten years, and if we do, how will that change? The on Earth, if we're able to travel and visit other uh, worlds and 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 meet these these uh, um, personalities, these other personalities that you've experienced, how will it be for us if we do have a starship? Well, that's a great question, and I will answer it like this: We already have that. And I, I'm going to have you mute, Mark, because there's some feedback. Okay, thanks. We already have that. And that is called our Merkaba vehicle. So this is our personal light body vehicle. And there are trainings that you can take to learn to amplify it. Also, all of the Ascension work helps with amplifying your light body. But the, the light ships, and, and there I did say starships, but um, what I'm really referring to is light ships. Those ships show up as light. Uh, and, and yes, there are beings inside of them and they do fly around in the sky and um, they are not bound by time, space and dimension the way that we are in this dimension. But um, right now you can start doing that. And that is part of galactic shamanism where you open up to receive information and contact from your galactic heritage, your galactic family. Um, and we all have galactic DNA, everybody on earth. And we, we were designed that way. Even if you only have earth memories or think of yourself as an earth being, we're still, uh, we're still carrying in the human DNA, galactic DNA. And so we have that connection. And so when we do work, when we do DNA work, when we do ascension work, when we do embodiment work, we are activating that those latent strands of galactic connection, galactic DNA. And we are activating 
our ability to make contact with our star families. And so you don't have to get into a physical ship to do that. You can actually travel in your light body or even easier, invite them to come to you. And they do, and they will when you're truly open to it. And you know, this requires an open heart, a an ascension of your frequency, where you have to be operating at kind of at your highest capacity, your highest frequency, in order to allow those energies and entities to work with you. And they will. So we really don't need to go anywhere. I, I find that very third dimensional thinking when I hear, you know, well, you know, we're going to make a ship and fly somewhere. You don't need to fly anywhere. They're, they're here already waiting for us to open up to make contact. We don't even need technology for that. We are the technology. The heart is the technology. The human heart, our heart center has the capacity to allow us to travel anywhere through the diamond light of the heart, which I introduced on day one. And then as we expand and open, we're creating a portal, a Stargate portal for the divine to come to us in many, many different forms. So that's my my answer to the to the starship. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that answer. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Next is it Lisa? Is it yeah. Go ahead, Lisa. Unmute. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, just grateful to be here and signed up for the community and can really feel the love. So there's just an immense amount of just gratitude for this spot that you're that you've really prepared for us. To have this connection for me is there really aren't any words I can put on it because when you don't have it around you to be able to connect online there, like I said, I, I could just burst into tears with gratitude because of this connection. So just there's a deep level of just saying thank you. I felt like I had to reestablish my boundaries and really start standing up not just loving ourselves. So I'm going to have to get your book and you know, that the love that we all crave and, and, and loving our loving myself completely. And everyone is a reflection. Is there any other areas um, or tips or tricks that you had for third eye opening crown or removing interference? Cause I've been doing a lot of work trying to move the ego out and in, in any type of, um, interference with like the empath and kind of so yeah. thank you okay sure um yeah for pineal activation again uh it's a lot of the stuff i've already alluded to with sun gazing is great for that breath work breath work is wonderful for activating the pineal gland all of the ascension work meditation um, bringing the, the light, bringing divine light into the center of your head, asking guidance for assistance in activating the pineal. And, you know, we, we focus a lot or spiritual people tend to focus a lot on the pineal gland. That's not the only thing that matters in your intuitive abilities. I mean, being empathic is a superpower being able to use every part of your body as an intuitive antenna is so powerful so the pineal gland is one element of that one aspect of that i think sometimes we're led down sort of a false path of believing oh, i have to do all this stuff to detox the pineal gland when yeah yeah it might be important as one element but there's so many other things that are important so um you know just to to follow that path and it will show up naturally detox the body Detoxing the body is going to clear your channels on multiple levels. So the more you, you know, if you want to fast or do a cleanse of some sort, you don't even have to be that extreme. And there are so many out there. I also study holistic nutrition. So I've had experience with a lot of different kinds and different body types can tolerate different types of fasting, but at a very high level, there are people who are breatharian. That's the highest level you can do. They live on breath and you know don't even have to drink water so we've been told that we need a lot more than we do we don't need to eat dense food 
We don't even need to eat food if we're trained, you know, we can live off the prana in the air. But most people feel like if they don't get three meals a day, they're, you know, they're not going to survive. And that's just not true. So there are many ways to lighten your body and lighten your field and and activate your intuition. So just follow, you know, get the information that you need, follow the things that speak to your heart, your, your body will tell you, oh, yeah, that's for me, you see something online, um, the blue green algae is great. And there are lots of there's a there's a product called vitamin real green by Gabriel cousins, that I've been using for probably a decade that I absolutely love put it in water or juice or whatever you drink. And it's, you know, things like that. Um, I prefer to taking vitamins and your, my body tells me what it wants. I can feel what it wants. So um, I invite you to just upgrade all areas of life as you pursue this path of activation. And then as you become more and more intuitive and trust yourself more, you'll naturally know when something comes into your field, whether or not um, it's right for you. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Wishing, uh, Go ahead, wishing, Olivia. Uh, and thank you, Olivia, yeah. for moderating today. I appreciate you. Oh, absolutely. It's my pleasure also to be here. And when you mentioned your your course, because I did take your six month course, and by the way, no, Washila is not paying me to say this, um, but I do have to say that I. I received a, a better and stronger connection with my galactic family. And so connection with the Lyrans, the Syrians, the Arcturians, I work often with the Arcturians because I am a, a quantum healing hypnosis technician. So they come in and they assist me uh, with the hypnosis sessions. Um, but uh, something I wanted to share about your program, Rachela, that was incredibly opening for me was uh, not only the breath work but the work that you did with um you know things that trigger us and how we ex excavated and we actually learned how to navigate those trigger trigger points that come along and have it actually work with us instead of us resisting them and pushing back all the time on it so i wanted to thank you for that um, because I would have never gotten those tools on my own. So, thank so you. thank you. Thank you so much. Um, someone was asking actually, if you would, wouldn't mind going further in detail about the walk-in experience that you had in your twenties. Mm, sure. Okay. So, and just to clarify, it wasn't my, I didn't have a walk-in. I was met by a walk-in who came and got me and we went we went traveling together um, in many ways so yeah what happened was uh i was living in dallas texas at the time i was in retail i had a retail store there and uh and i started that very young i started my first retail store when i was 19 years old still in college so um i had been getting messages about kawaii kawaii hawaii over and over and over everywhere i looked i i one time i even came to came back to my shop after i had closed up for lunch went for lunch break came back there's a book about kawaii on my desk and nobody had been in there i was it was it was empty so i'm like what and then the next thing i know you know people are walking in the front door talking about a trip to kawaii i went home to i had two roommates at the time went home after work and this didn't all happen in one day but in like you know a, a two week period we'll say or maybe three week period i went home one day and um my room one of my roommates had a magazine opened to nepali coast trail which is in kawaii and those are just some of the messages they were coming not so subtly and so obviously to me i was like all right i guess i get to take a trip to Kauai. so i started arranging my life to go for three months to Kauai, so that you know when you ha run a store you have to have i'd have a manager and have it you know covered and got all that groundwork done i was planning to go to Kauai. in the meantime um my i lived in a place called moon mansion and um and some of my roommates had been telling me there's a shaman in town and 
it's something about him. He reminds us of you when he talks. We, you know, like there's just something about it. You've got to meet him. You've got to meet him. Like, okay, you know, whenever that works out. And I heard this from multiple different friends. And then one day came home from work and um and one of my neighbors came and got me and said hey we've got that shaman over at our house come and meet him and so i went there i went it's just across the hall so i went over there and ended up talking to the shaman for a couple of hours and at the end of the conversation he said i'm i'm going on a journey across the u.s to do spirit work and soul work and i'm gonna end up in Kauai, and i want you to come with me and i said i'm ready let's go um, I had already arranged it, you know, so that's divine intervention. So that's how, you know, that doesn't happen to everyone. I realize sounds kind of um, far out and magical. This is how my life has been since the beginning. But what, what I found out is, so we were together three years. We traveled across the U.S. first uh, for about a month visiting sacred, sacred places. Actually, it was probably more than a month. Um, we went to Chaco Canyon, Canyon de Shade. Sedona, we went and then we went to Arizona. His mentor was a Lakota medicine woman, and she was such a powerful being. She was a galactic, she was a walk in. She would literally fly, like she would go fly starships. I mean, she was, she was like probably the most far out person I've ever met. She wasn't even, and she was um, so powerful. But we spent a couple of weeks on her land, and um, everything there was just magical. That's where I received my tonal name, Washela, was on her land. And th in that experience, two Mayan grandmothers, um, galactic Mayan grandmothers, manifested bodies and, and gave me that name in ceremony when I had asked for my soul's name. So magic, I mean, just incredible things happened. And so along that you know along that route and that experience i was just open i just got to be open and at one point the walk-in told me uh did you know we're, we're traveling across the u.s driving and he said, did you know we have a a, a starship escort and i'm like a starship escort what does that mean and he's like look just look up we have a starship escort everywhere we go and so i look up out the window and sure enough there's like it you know looks like it could be an airplane right something's following us or following alongside of us and i'm like well how do i know that that's real and he said ask it a question and i'm like okay so i internally i'm like if you're if you are our star starship escort blink three times and sure enough it blinks three times at me and i'm like Okay, well, you know, that could just be synchronistic, right? Like a, a plane can blink, sort of, right? I'm like, all right, if you're her starship escort, um, do a circle around the car, like a big circle. It did it, it did the circle. And I'm like, whoa, you know, like, and I think I asked one more question. I don't remember what now, but at that point, I was convinced, all right, we have a starship escort. And we did everywhere we went, we had a galactic escorts. And then um, at that, that's when I started really seeing them all the time. And then they started, you know, coming closer and closer until they were actually communicating with us very, uh, in, a, in a very present way. But what it required, what it required from me, because you know, I realize not everyone's having those experiences, but the magic is available to everyone, not just me. So what I did to prepare for that was amplified, uh, worked on my intuition. I listened, you know, I, I followed when, when guidance was telling me to go to Kauai, I didn't say, I'm, I'm a busy store owner. I have stuff to do. I can't get away for, you know, three months to go on some, you know, I don't even know what I'm going to do there. I didn't say that. I said, okay, Yes, I got it. I'm doing it. I'll do it. I'll follow through because that's where spirit's guiding me. I was open to the messages. When my friend said, there's a shaman you need to meet, I didn't say, oh, no, I don't need, I've got other things to do. I went and met the shaman. You know, I, I followed the breadcrumbs. And that's oftentimes how the divine works and how spirit works in our lives. We get breadcrumbs. We get synchronicities. People say something and, and we hear it in a certain way and it lands for us. Books come to us. Maybe they're given or fall off a shelf or our eyes are just drawn to them. Pay attention to what catches your eye. There are so many things that I've I've realized and caught on to and experiences that I've had just because I paid attention when I saw a flash of light out of the side of my eye and then followed that clue to the next thing. And next thing I know, something magical is happening. So, you know, don't second guess yourself. 
trust your intuition trust those signs and symbols that come up and follow them and be open to spirit and yeah it's okay to be logical sometimes but you really do get to suspend logic in this type of work if you want to work multi-dimensionally and galactically then you do not get to think in the same way that the normies do <laughs> that everybody else thinks you get to expand your vision and your mind to include more because there is so much more available and the more you do that the more you will get in tune with your own galactic family and guidance and more magic happens in your life as we raise our frequency into higher dimensions of reality there is more information more light available and therefore it's more magical and it's more fun and sometimes it's more intense but it's so worth it okay so that was <laughs> i think I got that thank one. you for answering hopefully that was a good answer for you i think gg asked that question thank so you, Gigi. yes <laughs> Okay, so let's go to the next hand up. It looks like, is it Yelena? Hi. Hi. I want to share this whole four days experience was really um, very empowering for me. And every day brings something new. Uh, but with this sphere i never i never was introduced to it but i at night i had a dream of like the healing ceremony and this one person was laying down and the whole team was uh healing the it was actually the yellow light and the person was feeling like it was ascending and then i i feel guided to using my hands and imagination and play with this ball of light and perform healing for myself and it was kind of a lot of synchronicity and uh, excitement come to me so my question about this spheres is i am trying to attune and receive the message but maybe you could help what is the difference of just using your energy and connect to the sphere as opposed to have the physical sphere in your space helping you yeah okay great question great question um my answer to that is it's the same as having the presence of your beloved with you versus getting to have a phone conversation or knowing that they're you know they exist you're connected you feel that connection you can work with that connection but they're not there with you in the in the physical and so it still works you know that connection still exists you can work with that energy having it present is next level you get to hold it you get to touch it it's it's for me it's more of an embodiment of the energy when i have it physically present with me and it's kind of hard to put into words. It is an antenna. So when I have it present, and I, I mean, I've, I've mentioned before, I sleep with one. I always have, I always have it around me, and I didn't always have them. I only was introduced to them a year ago. So you know, this is still a relatively new technology in my life. But when I have it in my, you know, in my bed with me, the the energy of it comes into my dream time and and shows me things and assists me with things. It's like having a guide, a galactic guide present in the physical it's a really special thing so that's kind of the best uh, analogy i can give you it doesn't mean that you can't be connected to it if you don't have one physically present absolutely you can i mean i hear stories all the time from people that have had healing experiences just from the virtual meditations that does happen and yet there's something very special about having the physical presence that for me is an, is a greater amplification of of being able to work with that energy. Thank you. That was a really great example. And if you don't mind sharing a little bit of story, how this physical shape come into your like how it presented and how it physicalized in 
in your world? How the how I how the Elki One spheres came to me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I met someone, uh, Gary, who was the former distributor of Elki One, who brought them to. I had met him one time. We had lunch together. Um, didn't see each other for a very long time. He, but he had told me he had this technology that he wanted me to experience. And I, I talked about this yesterday, but I was like, oh, you know, whatever. A lot of people want me to, you know, see their technologies and sometimes they're great, sometimes they're not, usually not. So I wasn't in a hurry. But when I finally did get to experience it for myself in person, I that's when I felt it. Like I felt the power of it. I, I got to hold it and the, the my angelic light body, the, I, I felt my my body just light up and I felt the angelic realm around me and I knew I, I got the divine download that this technology is here from the angelic realm to assist you and humanity in their ascension. And so I knew from that moment on that I would work with it. But before that, I, I didn't I didn't feel it. So I'm one of those I'm very I, I certainly am intuitive, but when I get to experience something in person, it's super amplified for me. Um, and and that was the experience that then I knew for sure that I would be an ambassador for this for this technology in whatever way. And then one thing led to another and I and I became a distributor for it. So I'm very grateful for it and I love sharing it. And um, and I love that it is, it's just a very special sacred tool for us to use for this time. Thank you, I appreciate that. You're welcome. Hi, how are you? Um, hey. um, I'm doing my best to be the best um, healer and uh, to serve people and teach in the best way. Having a bit in the fog lately, I have been learning uh, mindset skills, um, like uh, business skills or so, uh, and habits changing things, releasing <laughs> the distortions and stuff. At this point of my life, like right now, do I need to, or do you feel I need to focus more and still on uh, releasing things, distortions, or should I really get in my uh, butt into air and make those phone calls and go out and start teaching again and speaking again, because everything will stop during COVID, all my uh, book signings and health expos and everything was canceled. Is this something that I really need to focus on right now? Or should I still work on my inner world? I'm a little bit in the fog with that. If you could give me a little guidance, please. Yeah. Okay, sure. I, I think this is a pretty easy answer. I would say it's both or it's all. It's not just one or the other. You go out and you do your your work in person. You know, you we can't wait around for yes. the world. You know, we, it, that's not what this time is about. This time is about do it now and do it all now. Do your clearing work alongside of your, your, you know, book signing and getting out in the, in public, even if you book it and it gets canceled for some reason, it's better to have, have had the intention to be there and serve in that way than yeah. to wait around for the world to change. The world isn't gonna go back to the way it was. The world is changing every moment. So we get to just go on guidance, gui let guidance tell you what to book, where to go, when to go there, and then um, let let the universe support you in that. And if you're thinking about, you know, but if I'm touring, then I'm not doing personal work, that's just not true. You can tour and do very deep personal work at the same time. You can get up earlier and meditate. You, everybody that you meet, it's an opportunity to serve and to also be upgraded and, and served by that experience. So I, I would say do it now and don't, don't limit yourself to thinking it has to be this or this, or I need to wait for COVID. COVID did have a lot of people shut down. I get that, but, um, but this is not the time to shut down. This is the time to go powerfully forward in your, in your service. And however that looks for you, I encourage you to, to take it on. 
I appreciate it. I, I have been thinking about that. I got to pause. To, we never stop learning and we're evolutionary beings and stuff. So we can just stop our inner cleansing or inner work. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome. All right, Lori, you're next. Go ahead. And after Lori, then we'll share, you. I'll read in the yeah. chat. Okay. Hi, Olivia. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank you for your service, your humility and vulnerability and being willing to answer to your spirit. And the, the one of the questions I have is I keep hearing um, that people can read other people's chakras can you? <laughs> um, well, okay. So here's my answer to that. I certainly, I can get a reading, you know, as I've mentioned as a child, I was very empathic and I was getting inundated with a lot of information about a lot of stuff that I didn't want to know, didn't need to know, didn't care to know. So I made a deal with, um, with the divine that I will only do readings for people when they ask me specifically and directly to do so and that when they do then i will so with that i you know i yes i do and i don't make a habit of just uh like i can go out in the world and turn that all off and not see anything and i tend to operate that way because i've seen stuff i don't need to know and i don't want to know so i, I kind of keep that filter up unless i'm working with someone uh one-on-one -on -one in a in a personal setting and then i i will open up okay so um do you read medical intuitive? Are you a medical intuitive at all? That is not my focus. I work on the ascension rather than, you know, individual personal issues. So I do know if you're looking for a medical intuitive, I do know some good ones that I could probably refer you to. That's not the type of session that I do. There are frequencies with things. So my frequencies, my antenna, my receptors are set to um galactics ascension embodiment the divine light and less to like physical ailments and personal issues that doesn't mean i can't get access to that but i have to lower my frequency in order to do that and my higher service is to stay at a higher frequency and that's not a judgment on any they're amazing people that do that work so it's not a judgment on them it's just a different it's sort of like a a, a different specialty but um the the focus with like um, Joe Dispenza has been opening the pan pineal. So I noticed that Lisa focused, that was going to be my question <laughs> about opening the pineal and how would you know when it's really open? Oh, you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's it. It's that it. <laughs> you just pick up a lot of information. Um, it, you know, it's not just an on or off switch, Lori. It's a, it's a, like anything. There can be a incremental, gradual opening and increase of receptivity, um, but there can also be a really quick. I mean, it can happen that way. The goal isn't really to just like suddenly activate. I think it's better to do the work, the daily work, the step-by-step -step work, to gradually increase your frequency, expand your consciousness, awaken your intuition, activate the pineal gland, all of those things go hand in hand. So um, all of these things that you do, everything that I've talked about, the sun gazing, the nutrition, nature, um, everything that I've shared is part of that awakening experience. And it can be a daily practice. I think it's better to have a daily practice, do your work every day, breath work, you know, meditation, all of those things, versus have a sudden awakening. And then it can be very, very difficult to integrate and harmonize that and process it. You know, we hear these stories of people who have a sudden Kundalini, Kundalini awakening or a sudden activation, and it can be very um, difficult to integrate that and take it can take years in in many cases uh, and then then later after they go through their nervous breakdown from it <laughs> then, yeah. then they realize it's a gift <laughs> hopefully yes <laughs> but it takes a while <laughs> oftentimes yeah okay. yeah yeah 
Well, thank you for just being who you are. You're great. We all love you. Uh, thank, <laughs> thank you, Lori. <laughs> love you too. Thanks. Yep. Okay, so I will go and read uh, Stephanie's comment to you. Um, can you discuss the concept of a braided walk-in? Mm -hmm. On Lionsgate, I received the vision of a braid stretching down from Sirius. Then on the Ascension, um, I, I guess she's talking about one of the series that you did, came and connect, connections started clicking, but not sure what it means. Thank you for answering the question. Sure, absolutely. So there are many different types of walk-in experiences. A walk-in is a another soul or a higher version of your own soul, which is actually not a walk-in as much as an integration of the monad. But for just for to make this easy, um, a walk-in is when we think of another soul coming into the body, and this can be a full soul takeover where the original, the natal owner of the the body goes out and and goes to the other side continues their journey without the body and the walk-in gets ownership of the body and then in that case the walk-in must complete the natal soul's karma before they can do their own service mission work and um and that's the most commonly known style of walk-in another style of walk-in is the braided walk-in so a braided walk-in is when um the the original the natal stays present in the body at least to some degree maybe not 100 percent present but does stay in the body and then another soul or a different version or higher ascended version of the soul the same soul or a it could be a different soul but they're always soul family and there's always a soul contract in order for this to happen so the braid is the other soul comes in and joins the natal owner of the body and then they're sharing the body and they're sharing the psyche and they're sharing everything and so it can be i think the braid is probably the most confusing type of walk-in to have because there's this um, it's almost like having two person. It is that really having two personalities in one body and there gets to be a synergy and a harmonization so that each part can integrate and understand how to how to work. And if you can have that integration, it's a really beautiful thing because then both aspects that are in the body get to serve a purpose, they get to serve a mission, they get to clear karma, there's all kinds of things that can, can happen. And this can also happen when someone, if someone's in a lot of trauma or having a very difficult time, they can get a braid, that braid might be a guide that comes in and assists them either temporarily or permanently. Uh, braids, just like other types of walk-ins can be uh, temporary experience or it can be a long-term experience. The the one that I experienced, the walk-in shaman, was a three-year, uh, he came in the body, he got to use that body for three years, and then he left. He had to go back when, and the agreement was, I didn't know this till much later, the agreement was that when the natal, the owner of the soul, recovered to because he had had a drug overdose and died and the walk-in came in used his body to come and get me and train me for three years and then recovered the body to where it was um able to integrate the natal back in then the walk-in had to go and that was the agreement so there are lots of different ways that this can happen, but the braid is definitely when uh, it's the body's being shared by more than one consciousness. And whether that consciousness is of different aspects of the same soul or one soul and another soul inhabiting at the same time, you, you have a braid experience. And if you wanna know more about that, um, who, who was it, Olivia, that asked that question? That was Stephanie. Stephanie, okay, so Stephanie, if you want to know more about that, I'll invite you to just respond to the email that got you here, and I'll I'll reply to that because that's it's really important if you are experiencing a braid to be able to integrate that and have the right resources. You can do amazing things, but you do need to have support to integrate that properly and not get um, confused because it can be psychologically difficult to have a braid. And um, so I'd, I'd either, I'd love to support you or find you someone. I know plenty of people that could also help you. 
I really appreciate that. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, and I think the first question was the question I was going to ask is, um, I was told in a, in a session probably 18 months ago that I was a galactic shaman and I had no idea what that meant. And so you coming into my consciousness and then Lionsgate this year, it's like, I know I'm meant to be here. Um, I'm very emotional, sorry. It's been a great, Alchemy of Ascension was great. This four days have been great. Um, I messaged you about um, your alien visit, you know, your galactic, excuse me, your galactic visitation. So just dots are connecting and I really appreciate you so much and everybody here, Wonderful. thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, feel free to reach out again. And I, I, I love that you got that message. Trust it, trust your messages, you know, that's very powerful. So love to support you in whatever way. And speaking of that, I am going to put in the chat. Um, Alchemy of Ascension. Well, Here. no, not Alchemy of Ascension, the embodied uh, Ascension six month course. There's oh, yeah. a link in there that you, if you want to read about it, learn about it. The first link is to, you can go explore what I have on my page. The second one is if you want to book a call to discuss, if you're like on the fence, you're reading about it, you're like, maybe this is for me. Maybe it's not. I'm not sure. I need to talk to somebody. Um, I don't have enough time in my own calendar, but I do have an assistant, Janelle. She's wonderful. She was on the first day with us. I know Olivia, you went through the training with her, so you know her. She's awesome. And um, she she will take your calls. She's got her calendar open for whoever wants to have a conversation about the pot potential of joining a body ascension, but you're just not ready to jump in without, without talking to someone. And Janelle has actually, I think she's my only embodied ascension student that has done it three times. Um, she went through the whole thing and, you know, here's the thing, it meets you where you are. So she went through the whole thing got amazing results and then had a little break. And then she decided to do it all again. And then she came out at an even higher place. And then a while down the road, maybe six months or so, she's like, I'm going to do it a third time. And she's like, at that point, she's like, yeah, I really got it now. <laughs> so she's, she's great. You'll love talking to her if you book a call with her. Um, and you can use that link in the chat. Um, someone else also asked a question regarding Nelson, I believe Mandela. Do you believe in your opinion that a Mandela was a walk-in? And that question comes from Nazma. Hmm. I've never really thought about him being a walk-in, but it's absolutely possible. Another thing that's very possible in that situation is an integration of the monad. So that's not a, the same as a walk-in, but it has similar um, qualities to it. And what that means is you've ascended your frequency. You've had an experience of awakening to a point where a higher version, your higher self essentially is coming into your body. Most people are not born this way. Um, but throughout your life, if you do this work, you're opening up and we're all doing this incrementally all the time when we do this work. So you're expanding your ability to hold more of your divine light, more of your high self, and you're allowing that to come into your physical body, embodied ascension. That's what it is. And so someone who's integrated their monad to a very high level is someone who's opened, really opened up and allowed their higher self to come into the body. And they, now they operate from a place of complete service and from, from uh, their purpose and they have a mission. And so I, I would think it's more likely that he probably maybe wasn't a walk-in soul, but had integrated his monad to a very high degree. And so, yeah, Tony, go ahead, you're next. Hi, Marshall, well, Sheila, sorry. Um, I'm working, so I'm trying to do <laughs> two things at once. Um, couple questions though. Um, I kind of told you the story about my mom passing away when I was younger and um, she came back to me and I, I was just so thankful to see her again that I didn't hear what she was saying. And I could see that she was stressed out trying to tell me something that was very important to, you know, but I couldn't understand what she was saying because I was just in awe of seeing her. Um, the question is, is that I don't feel like I'm opening myself up and I want to be able to open myself up to meet my galactic family. How do I, how do I do that? Well, you're there, are, you know, there are lots of ways to do that. And all of the steps of embodied ascension will take you in that direction. Um, you, you know, it's, it's pretty much the same as everything I've been sharing as you 
expand your um, your capability of feeling, of receiving information, of activating your body as the antenna of the divine, then you get to, you know, there, there are different frequencies of different energies out there as well. I, I do not work with, um, with ghosts or uh, just deceased spirits. I will help them cross over, but I don't, you know, I don't really work with them. I don't do mediumship in that way. It's a different frequency, but I do do mediumship for guides. Um, that's part of my service. So what I found is in a reading, if a deceased loved one, if somebody's deceased loved one is showing up specifically in the capacity of being a guide, then I will pick them up. But otherwise, they're on a different different frequency that I just filter that out. I have a certain range that I work with, and and so those aren't there. So what what I'm really getting to here and answering your question is, <clears throat> you as you go through these. Um, ascension experiences and and do this work you will be opening and you will get to you'll you'll get to be able to discern what frequency is you know like the frequency your mother came in she obviously had a message for you um you may or may not be able to pick that up depending on the frequency she's coming in at if she's coming in as a guide and you're uh you're you you're attuned to getting messages from guides, you'll be able to pick that up easily. The same is true of the galactics. They have a certain frequency and each one, each type of galactic has a certain frequency. I have like different ways of communicating with different galactic guides, very different ways. In fact, like certain, certain energies will come in in, um, some will come in in sound, some will come in in light, some will come in in sacred geometry, others will come um, very, like very physically and, and I'll be able to see them and talk to them just like they were a person. Uh, so there, there's this whole frequency range. And as you become more sensitive, as you open up and allow and surrender your resistance, you're going to experience more and more and more of that. You will be able to interact with your mother if, if you want to call her back in. And you can do that right now. You can call her in and ask, you know, what is that message? I'm sorry I got like so excited I couldn't hear it. You can bring her in in your meditation and commune and ask her to, to share again in a way that you can receive it. And then it's just a, a refinement, a fine tuning of your skills. It is a practice. This is all the practice i'm i'm surrendering is what it is i i think you're right okay perfect thank you you're welcome thank you yes hi with shayla hi hi i just want to say first of all that i'm very grateful that i have found you and your teachings and what i'm calling about what i wanted to ask about is happening right now so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to explain it, but after hearing some of your answers about walk-ins and DNA activations, um, what I want to know, and I'll probably call Janelle, is have you heard of people having those experiences of feeling like other people, but, but multiple people, and it's ongoing. It's like I'm being guided to choose. Mm -hmm. How do you just maintain self? Mm. Okay, so does that makes sense to you. It does it actually does? Yeah, it sounds like you are a really wide open channel, and you're experiencing a lot of different um, energies, frequencies, beings, whatever you want to call it, simultaneously. Have you? Do you it's, do it's, channeling? No, and what I'm experiencing is people I know. Mm -hmm. Okay, like I'm being guided to pick. To pick, like pick a person or pick a group or, but it's difficult when you don't have the same people in your life all the time. And, and I'm not really understanding why do I have to, how do you, how do you just stop it? So are you saying that you're experiencing deceased people coming to you? Or no. Okay. It's like feeling the sensations or the, like you're picking up the energy up, the energies. Up. Okay. Okay, so you're you're empathically you're an empath and you're picking up a lot of different energies. So, um, you it would do you you get to learn how to filter, <laughs> and um, any anybody who's really highly empathic, it's a superpower. And if you don't know how to use it and you haven't 
learned how to filter energies, it's, it's going to be overwhelming and, and uncomfortable. Um, just like I mentioned as a child, I was picking up so much that I learned to put those filters and I made a deal with the divine. I will only, um, I'm only going to do that work when I'm specifically asked because otherwise I just don't want to know. Right. Well, so much. I, I keep asking that. I keep asking to stop it or slow it down or, and what it sounds, what it seems like is what you're describing with walk-ins, but it's with people I know experiencing like the personality changes or feeling their personalities, mm-hmm. their so bodies. You're, you're feeling them like as if, even though they're, you know, person that's alive and a friend or a family member, you're feeling as if they're coming into your energy field and you're feeling as if you are that person. At times. Does that make okay. sense to you? Yeah, absolutely. There's a, um, there's a wonderful, it. wonderful channel named Paul Selig. Have you ever heard of Paul Selig? No. Um, he's, he's interesting to listen to. I've been, I went, I found him right when he launched his first book and he used to do these circles and there, I was in a couple of circles with 25 people or 23 people, really tiny. Now he's got thousands, but, um, but he would do this thing where, and, and I learned how to do it, where he could actually intuitively pick up the frequency of someone, let's say somebody has an issue with their spouse, their spouse isn't there, but they can get in front of him and say, Hey, I'm having a problem with my spouse. Can you help me figure out what's going on? And he would tune in and then he would take on all of the characteristics, the voice, the mannerisms of that, uh, of that other person and be able to share back what was going on and what that person's thinking and feeling from their energy field. And it's, it's a really powerful way to do psychic work. And, um, and I learned that from going to his circle. So when I used to do psychic readings, I was able to do that just by looking at a picture and hearing the name of the person. And so you might have a gift like that that's coming in. It's just that you get to figure out what your boundaries are around that because you don't want that coming in when you're not, when you don't want it. You only want to be able to, you only want to do that when you are ready for that, when you're open to it. So part of that is, uh, I have a class out called protect yourself from psychic attack. I know some of the, some of the elements of that would probably be really helpful, but you know, there are a lot of ways to fortify your field. And the main thing is to know you're okay. You're going to be okay. Um, there are ways to help you things like the LQ one technology will help you manage and balance your energy field. Um, there are lots of things that can help you with that, even your crystals and stuff, as long as you're keeping them clear. And then your, you know, your interaction, your meditation with the divine and do like, don't just ask for that, but, but really claim, this is an empowerment thing. So you want to really be able to claim your power and put yourself in your own field and sort of like put a reflective, um, boundary around a bubble around yourself so that you're reflecting out anybody else's energy so that you can get to feel yourself and know who you are without the other energies kind of coming in and, and intruding on your energy. And then just to be able to open that up when you want to, then it's a gift, but that does take, that's not something I'm going to be able to explain to you on, you know, right now, that's something that would take some practice and some tools and some, you know, some work to be able and to. And would that uh, involve sessions with you or could I discuss with Janelle or is it some of your classes? Um, I mean, you, you would, you would get some of those elements certainly in uh, embodied ascension six month course. Uh, but you would also, you know, like it, it can be me. It can be someone else. Absolutely. We can get you help. I mean, if you want to book a call with me, you can, and we can discuss what, what would be helpful to you. But I get that it's a real it's a real feeling to be inundated by energies that are not yours. And it's so important to be able to protect your field from that, if, especially if you're empathic, because otherwise it just gets really confusing. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anyone else you would suggest? You can always book a session with me on my website. Those are paid sessions, but I'll, you know, those are sessions that are available and I give you hundred percent of my attention for however long you book 45 minutes or an hour. Um, otherwise I can think about that. If you want to email me, if there's, uh, I know there are people that specifically work with empaths. You can also book a call with Janelle and, um, and talk to her about the, about the course. Okay. Thank Um, you. All right. Sure. Thank you.
But there was a question that came in, I believe it was from Gigi. Could you explain what the monad is? Uh, is that the higher self? Yeah, we think of that, yeah, the higher self, the higher self okay. aspect. Mm -hmm. The higher self aspect, okay, great. So I believe Ilka asked the question, wonder what you think of the theory ab or theory ab the earth colliding with interdimensional bubble creating a massive boom in the next few years sometimes i'm not familiar I'm not sure. with that one um ilka are you still here if you could unmute yourself and just hi i just heard that from um somebody that wrote an amazing book and she's highly intuitive and uh, so we have been communicating by email with her and she uh, said that this is something similar to the rapture quantum energy not so many psychics or other intuitives or scientists are picking on that um so it's some kind of a subtle energy sort of pretty soon uh, we will collide with this kind of interdimensional bubble and when this happened many people might die from fear um, and many uh, might lose their kind of they won't be able to see too well for a week or two but if they drink plenty of water they'll be okay and then afterwards <laughs> we'll be able to be uh, more to feel each other's uh, thoughts to be more intuitive who have more light for and will go through this for 2000 years. So I was just wondering. Okay, yeah, I would like, I'd love to comment on that. Here's the thing, you get more of what you focus on. That is a very fear-based philosophy. And I avoid those types of philosophies at all costs because they are very expensive. Psychically, if we have people worried about, you know, what some sort of galactic collision, it's just, you know, fear and chaos. It's more of what the, um, the, the dark is broadcasting, what the negatively oriented beings that exist on our planet, that is a negatively oriented broadcast that creates fear and chaos and doubt and disharmony. I, I renounce those types of, um, of ideas. I'm not saying there's no darkness happening or no, no shadow on our planet. I'm not saying that at all, but to come up with a, a theory like that and say that, oh, the, you know, the other people aren't picking up on it because why? Because it's just her. Well, that, that is a fear broadcast. I would stay far away from anyone that, that shared that with me. I, I wouldn't go there. So that's I was just curious because I know many people see or tune into different energies and things. So I was just wondering. Yeah. Well, we get what we focus on. I'm focused on the ascension. I'm experiencing ascension. That's what I'm going to keep focusing on. And I'm taking the people with me who want to have that experience. If yeah. somebody wants to focus on doom and gloom and darkness and the end of the world and, uh, and you know, mass destruction, then that's what they're going to get. And they're going to take people with them. The people that want to go there want to buy into that. So uh, just, just don't go there. I, I don't think it's focus on the good okay. and the light. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. And that doesn't mean to bypass, you know, I'm not saying there's not darkness. So just be, be clear. I'm not saying we need to be all love and light and fairies and unicorns all the time. There are difficult things that happen. There are, you know, emotional energies and there are relationship issues and people die. And, you know, we've got to process things and we get to feel what we're feeling and feel our emotions and and process those so they don't become dense in the body. However, what we focus on, we get more of. So do that work, acknowledge your emotions, and then let it go. Let that clear from your field and don't get sucked into the fear and darkness and the broadcasts that are all around us coming through the televisions and radios that would have us go into lower frequency experiences, lower density experiences of being. That is a broadcast that intentionally is designed to bring people's frequency down so that they do not make the, the ascension. Thank okay. you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for Shayla. So the next um, question I believe comes or comment comes from Paula. Just curious as to why Gary Kiss stepped back from distributing the spheres. Are you able to share the why you came in to take it over? 
I'm going to try, I'm going to share this. Uh, let's see, I'm looking for the best way to share. Okay. Gary has his own reasons for, you know, for separating from Alki Wan and the founder of Alki Wan is Stepan Oradnik uh, in the Czech Republic. And he's an amazing man and shared, you know, about him with all of you. Um, it's, it's Stepan's technology. Stepan created it. Stepan is the one that brought it in through the angelic realm. He received the recipe. He worked on it for 10 years. And he, he made it, you know, he made it perfect. He perfected it so that it would be the antenna and the portal that we, that we have now. And it's beautiful. And those of you that have felt it know that, right? Um, Gary was working with Stepan for a year as the U.S. distributor. And maybe took a turn that was not in alignment with what Elkiwan represents. And therefore there was a separation. He and Stepan no longer worked together. And Stepan reached out to me and said, I need a US distributor. So, you know, for me, from my perspective, it's all perfect. I mean, Gary's doing whatever he's doing now. Um, and it's, I'm not affiliated with that. Uh, Gary wanted me to stay with him and, and do what he's doing. But I talked to each of them. I talked to Gary and I talked to Stepan the same day, uh, about 30 minutes apart from each other. I spoke to each of them for an hour and it was very, very, very clear to me what my next move was, even though I did not go looking for it. I didn't necessarily want to step into the role of distributor. I have plenty to do, but I do serve this technology. And I actually did sleep on it before I said yes to Stepan because I, I really had to make sure that I could handle what I was taking on and serve it in the highest way. And I, and Elkiwan did come to me and share with me that that's the highest path for, for, for me and us. It's, I feel like it chose me to be the distributor because I hold it so sacred and I won't distort the frequency of it. And, um, you know, distortions were happening. That's all I, that's all I need to say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being transparent for Sheila. I know that wasn't an easy question to no. answer. And I, and I, uh, and I never want to get into gossip and I, yeah. you know, I feel like I probably said a little too much, but I do have a lot of people asking that question. And I just kind of feel like I also owe it to everyone that I introduced Gary to Gary and you've been, you know, that, and, and it's not that I have a problem with Gary. I just feel like I kind of owe an explanation because I did introduce my list to him. Thank you. Um, yeah, that must have been a really difficult uh, position for you to be in. I can't imagine. So I am going to move on, though, to the next question, uh, which has to do with the Starship. So Anne-Marie would like to know, is the Starship Escort a ball of light or is it larger? So the Starship Escort that I had with the, the walk-in shaman, would that would follow us was like a star i mean it literally looked like a star up in the night sky now we could call it closer and when they come closer they get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger um they when they visit and there was one time where we had one literally visit right outside our house and it was the size of the house and that was a satellite ship that wasn't even the mothership after it flew off we saw it rejoin with se several other satellite ships and then fly out to the ocean to the mothership so they and and again these are light ships they're they look like light they look like stars in the sky a lot of the stars that we see in the sky are not stars, they are light ships. I mean, that, that's going on all the time. And if you go outside with an open mind at night and you have a clear vision of the stars, you might be surprised at how much interaction is available to us at any time because they're consciousness. The light ships are conscious. And if, they, if, if you're reaching out to them with your consciousness and with an open heart, they will respond to you. 
and they will, you know, you can, you can even ask them. It's always okay to kind of test them and say, all right, if you are, you know, if you are, and I, and I also, I don't need to do this anymore because I understand the frequency, but in the beginning, when I was learning to do this and make contact with them, I would ask, are you benevolent? You know, are you of the light? And then I, if you ask three times, this is something the shaman trained me. If you ask three times and um, that they have to answer if, and if they're not of the light, they'll probably just leave because you're testing them. But to, to establish that connection, now I know the frequency. I don't, I don't need to do that, but those are kind of preliminary things. You don't want to just go into communication with anything that's out there. Sometimes it's not benevolent. So make sure that you're, you know, you're feeling the frequency of what you're interacting with, but go out and be open and, and open your heart, raise your frequency and connect to your galactic family and say, if you're out here, could you show me a sign? You know, I'd really love that and see what happens. And you might start getting messages and seeing things in the sky. Oh, I love that. I might try that. I just moved to North Carolina into the mountains and it's clear skies. And yeah, you're right about the, the, the stars. I mean, they speak to me. So I'll have to try that. Um, okay, I'm going to go on to Anne's question. Um, hi, Washela. First of all, thank you for all of your teachings. This question regarding the pineal gland may be a bit controversial. However, I feel compelled to ask you. Many light workers have to comply with getting vaccinated to be able to work. Is it true that it might, it might block our ability to activate the pineal gland? That's the first question. The second question is, what have you heard about it from the galactic? Ooh, that's a, that's a, that's a, a sticky topic. But um, I, so just my personal, I'll just give this to you. Um, my personal experience with, and I'm not going to say the word because I can get um, on YouTube, I can get flagged for that. But with the VAX, when I was a child, when I was, I don't know, probably two, three years old, uh, I remember my mother taking me to the doctor and they were injecting me with substances and I saw what was going on and I knew that it was not, it was wrong. And I'm like, I don't, I can't believe I felt, I felt betrayed by my mom and by the doctor. I never trusted doctors again after that. I, um, I knew that that was poisonous and, and not good for my body. And I know it'll probably trigger some people with this and you do not have to have my same point of view. Um, but this is what I experienced from a very young age. I did, you know, I, I did not agree with the, and if we want to look at it as frequency, there's a frequency. And it did not match for me. I knew that that was not for me. And I also knew that that was not for my children. My children have never had. And that's just where I stand on that issue. I'm going to have to go back and edit because I said the word. Um, <laughs> and, and I still feel that way. So, you know, I, and, and I invite you to have different feelings, but uh, nobody, nobody, I, I wouldn't allow anyone to put that in me or my children because I feel like it would distort my frequency. Now, I understand some people have done that, have had to do that for work or whatever, but um, there, I do have a meditation on YouTube that is designed specifically for that. And it's called Recoding the VAX. And it, if you do that meditation, it's designed to assist you in upgrading your system and detoxing that. Other things like the LK1 spheres can help you in the detox. There are protocols out there. Um, there's a man who has an amazing machine called Live O2. It's L-I-V-E-O2, Mark is his first name. And it's an oxygen machine. He has a whole protocol online. I don't remember his website. It might be Live O2. I can put it in the notes. He's amazing though. He's got a protocol. He can recover anyone that's had up to two, um, up to two of the, of the most recent ones that have been out. But I think after that, it gets a lot more difficult to purify the blood. So just be aware of that. And that's all I need to say. Thank you for answering that. Yeah, I have the spheres also. And I think you had mentioned a while back that the spheres actually do cleanse the blood. So yeah. Um, unlike you, I mean, I've tried to sleep with mine, but I have to tell you, there's so much energy there. Sometimes yeah. I have to put them aside. 
Um, uh, let's see, Michael mentioned, just wanted to say thank you for the Alchemy of Ascension season six. So much there as well as uh, these last four days. Very grateful also for your teaching of embodied ascension. So important to be in our bodies for this trip. Many thanks, much loves and hugs. We've been at it a while, so I think it's a great time to close. Yes. Um, I, I enjoyed this. I'm also going to do um, AMAs in the community membership. So if anyone um, wants to join in on that, this will be something that we do regularly. And it'll be a much smaller group than, you know, than this most of the time. So you'll really get some personal time as well as time to interact with other people in the group. And I just, I really want to thank everyone for being here for some of you for all four days. And for those of you that have, that have showed up and kept coming and keep working on yourselves, I just appreciate everything you're doing to raise your frequency and, and activate the ascension, not just for yourself, but for all of humanity. And that is our power as a collective, as we ascend, we are also ascending the entire human collective. So I thank you all for that. I appreciate you. I cherish you and look forward to seeing you on the next thing, whatever that may be. So thank you all so much for being here. And thank you, Olivia, for all that you've done and for showing up and serving in this way. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you, Washela. I did miss one question. I'm terribly sorry to do this at the last minute. But Malin did ask something about spirit animals and how. So the question is, I would like to know and learn about spirit animals. In what ways are they important in our ascension? Mm, yeah, they're guides, just like just like our, our galactic guides, animals are guides as well. And if you have spirit animals and you know what they are, they'll show up for you. They have messages. They will guide you. They will give you um, all kinds of information and synchronicities and it's wonderful to work with your spirit animals that's you know one of my uh favorite decks of cards is the the animal totems and yeah and working with nature in general you know not just the the animals but all of nature has messages for us and is is really encouraging us in our ascension path so whether it's the animals or the nature spirits or the plant and the plants um, they're all here to help us on our journey. Thank you for answering that. And I apologize, Melon, for missing your question. Thank you, Washela, for answering that at the last minute. And um, hopefully I'll get to see everyone. And now that you mentioned Janelle took the, your course again, I think I'm going to sign up again too. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, that's awesome. It's going to be such a great group. I'm so excited for this next round. Okay. All right, everybody. Love you all. Thank you for being here. We'll see you soon. Namaste, everyone. Bye-bye. Awesome.